It's a 1969 Jaguar E-Type 2 Plus 2, which is kind of uh, like the black sheep of the E-Type world. Um, E-Types are known for being one of the most beautiful cars from the 60s. And uh, the 2 Plus 2 had an interesting roof line. So what we did was we took that and we wanted to add our, add our flair to it essentially. For the past two years, we've been doing these kind of Frankenstein builds with the e where we take Japanese motors and put them into different cars. So we did an F20, which is an S2000 motor into an E30. And then we did a uh, EJ25 STI motor into a 997 GT3. And now we did this with the E-Types. E-Types originally in the early 60s were built, uh, they actually had factory built race cars. They're called the lightweights. And we tried to get the styling from those fenders and add them to our car. It was done by 3D printing. So we scanned the car and then they designed the, the fenders around kind of like an exaggerated version of the old lightweights. And sticking with that, that Japanese and like European Frankenstein build, we put a 2J in it. So I, I love 2Js. I compete with a 2J in, in Formula Drift Pro Spec. I used it in Pro 1 when I was in Pro 1. I, I, super simple motors. They make a lot of power. They're a lot of fun to drive. This is a three liter motor, CB pistons, Carrillo rods, Borg Warner 8474 turbo, about 750 horsepower. The V-mount setup on the front is interesting because we had to essentially come up with a way to package the intercooler. You have the vibrant modular intercooler up top. And then underneath you'll have, we have a triple pass radiator that makes a V-mount through the front nose. Originally, when we first started building the car, we wanted to really build it as a street car. Keep trying to restore the old interior quickly. We, that was not a possibility, but we wanted to keep some aspects of the, the old vintage interior. So we took the original uh, dash cap, we had that recovered, and then we, uh, it, the car runs on a Link, just like all the Prospect cars do. So this is on a Link Fury. And uh, we have a link dash on there. Um, just kind of simplified all the interior. The seats are tillet carbon seats. It's nice because you know, not only are tillets really, really light, but they're also structurally very small because it's just a carbon shell that fits really nicely around your body. And with the interior of the car, the headroom is actually really good, but they're not a very wide car. So we need a seat that would still allow the doors to close and windows to roll up. And one of the few seats that we could find was actually the tillets. So I have, I have a bunch of cars and we were with, with, my, with my lady, I was going through all the different cars we have and she's like, well, why don't you just drift the E-Type? And I was like, and this is why I love you. And so it, it worked out pretty well. Um, but yeah, so we're just figuring out which cars we can use in different uh, things. And I do a lot of ride-alongs and like demonstrations. So we're gonna use this as a demo car as well. So one of the cool things about the build that we get a highlight is the Enio 050, which is rarely mentioned. Um, the 050 they make is perfect for this kind of build because it not only has the cold start protection with the zero weight, but then also can handle the power with the 50. So 750 horsepower, but I can still drive it on the street and start in cold weather. It's pretty much a perfect platform for that. For us, we love racing heritage. I think where we are today in the world is, is because of our history, right? And keeping especially the younger crowd understanding there's a lot of history in racing um, and it gets forgotten and so the e-types history and especially like unibody racing is uh, is pretty epic.